Hi. Today we will see Workflow, which was built specifically for product images, but works with many types of images, and makes it possible to integrate the product into a new environment that knows how to respond to it, while adjusting the lighting and colors, and above all keeping the object exactly as it was photographed. In this workflow I connected two different workflows, which we have already seen before, the Product Photography Workflow and the IC Light Workflow. As usual, we will start at the beginning, here you upload the product image, the image goes through the image resize node, while maintaining proportions of course. We disconnect the main object from the background, using remove background, and here you can see the mask that was created for us, which we will also use later. There is a prompt styler here, and some text find and replace, as we have already seen in previous workflows. Control net with a depth map adapted to SDXL which receives the image after the resize, this will help the model build an environment that matches the perspective of the product photography. The first part of the workflow is adapted to SDXL, and I work with the Juggernaut Lightning model. All of this goes into the case sampler which is adapted to the model, because we are doing a type of in-painting. I also use differential diffusion, and we get the latent from the original image with the mask using the VAE for in-painting. If you want to get several versions for the background, I also added a repeat latent batch here. Down here there is an IP adapter, which allows you to upload a reference image as a basis for the background. I work with style transfer. And this is the picture we received, definitely not bad. You can see the shadow and the perspective that correspond to the photograph of the product. And if we pay attention to the details, as we already saw in the previous workflow, we see that the product does not look good in terms of the small details and its outlines also look bad, so as we did in the previous workflow, this group of nodes allows us to take the original product and paste it on the background we created. Let's understand what is happening here. There is a llama remove object here, which takes the image we got with the mask of the product after we enlarged it, and this is the result we get, we actually deleted the previous bottle. And now what remains is to connect it to the original product, for which the image composite mask is responsible. And this is the result of this stage, almost identical to the previous workflow we have already seen. You can of course finish at this point, and the result can certainly be enough in many cases. But if we look at the reflection and the color of the bottle, it seems a bit detached from the surroundings. So after the previous step we did with the SDXL model, we move to work with the SD 1.5 model, because IC Light is not compatible with SDXL. I connected the positive prompt to the prompt from the previous step. The clip of course comes from the SD 1.5 model. For the foreground I connected the bottle without the background, there is also an option here to work with the background we created earlier, but it very much depends on the case and the desired result. In our example I am currently only using the foreground. It is worth remembering that if you want to work in IC light also with a background image, you need to change to a model that ends in FBC. The IC light needs a mask based on which it creates the light map in the image, and for the process to be as automatic as possible and as similar as possible to the background image we created in the previous part, I simply use the background image we have already created and turn it into a mask, which I feed to IC light as the light map. Later we will see you can also control this mask manually. And all of this goes into the case sampler, which of course is adapted to the model we are now working with. And this is the result we get. There is certainly a change in the lighting, but the image now is not so similar to our product. Certainly if we look at the small details, and the background has also changed completely, losing the harmony it had with the product. And we arrange this with this group of nodes, you can call it high frequency and low frequency or simply work with combination methods, as we are used to since the first days of Photoshop. The first node, overall, blurs the image we got after the IC light. This blurring is important, so that we can get rid of the small details, such as text or small outlines, and leaves us mainly with the light and color, which we want to mix with the image from the first part. I connect the bottle from the blurred image to the previous background, this step is not so necessary, as it helps to understand the relationship between the change and the final image. These two image blend nodes are responsible for combining the color and the level of brightness. The bottle from the original image is connected to both of them, and I mix it with the blurry bottle we got after the icy light. 
One image blend is aimed at multiply and highlights the dark pixels of both images. And the second image blend focuses on the screen and highlights the bright pixels of both images. The blend factor allows you to adjust the strengths of these combinations. These two images are also combined with another image blend, and we connect everything with the help of image composite mask with the background from the first step, and of course the mask of the product we created at the beginning of the workflow. There are two more high pass and image filter adjustment filters here, which help sharpen a bit and play with the contrast and general clarity of the final image. And this is the result we got. Let's go through the whole process together from the beginning with a different image, and see how you can change a little and adjust the result to your liking. I'm uploading the picture of this toy car, we'll change the prompt to car and city lights, bokeh. I also upload a reference image for the background, and press Q. And this is the result we got, we will try to change the mask that affects the icy light a bit, you can see it here. And this is why we have the preview node here that allows you to draw additions to the mask that is created automatically. We will select, open in mask editor, and draw where we want to get more lighting, and press Q. As you can see the mask is updated with our addition. And this is the final result. And a final example, let's take the product image of these glasses. In the prompt I write sunglasses under the water sun in the horizon this is the reference image i chose and click q this is the result we got without changing any parameter we tried to work with the background option in icy light you just have to connect the ve of the background to the background and remember to change the icy light model to fbc as you can see the result is very saturated so i can decrease the blend factor of the dark pixels and this is the final result so I hope you learned and we will meet in the next lessons. You are of course welcome to subscribe to the channel, ask questions, and like if you liked it. And most importantly, have fun. Bye.